Now, 61 years ago this week, as Britain handed over power to a young idealistic nation called Nigeria, there was a real confidence about Nigeria, and that confidence was built on the potential of the country. Full of hope and optimism, Nigerians embraced their newly won independence with tremendous vigor and enthusiasm. According to figures from 1960, Nigeria actually had a much greater opportunity to grow and diversify its economy than India. And that momentum propelled the early leaders to focus on programs such as education, healthcare, infrastructure development and agriculture. These were leaders who were comparatively selfless and who were there to serve the people. To them, all the resources belonged to the people and were to be used for their benefit. So, 61 years later, whatever happened to that selflessness and idealism? How did Nigeria end up with a leadership crisis? Well, to reflect on Nigeria's leadership direction, 61 years after independence, I'm joined now on the line from Calabar by the lawyer, former governor of Cross River State and former presidential candidate, Donald Duke. Uh, great to see you, Governor Duke. And uh, <laughs> I have to say, on, on a fairly dodgy internet line, but I mean, you're... You're, 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 we're very grateful to you for um, making this appearance. And uh, I interviewed you when Nigeria turned 50 more than a decade ago. I remember you saying that after nearly 40 years of military rule that was directionless and more than a decade at the time of civil rule that failed to properly position Nigeria to attain the next level, you said that this country was in dire need of an enlightened leadership that can move it forward. Have you detected that enlightened leadership yet since you uttered those words in 2010? Uh, thanks, Charles, and I apologize for what you described aptly as a dodgy internet. It's part of the dodgy situation we find in our country. Things that you take, think should be absolutely normal um, is extraordinary here. No, we haven't found that enlightened leadership, unfortunately. We are still bogged down by primordial challenges, um, where you come from, how you worship. But all that is all encased in a larger problem of poverty. It's only when you're poor and unable that you try and use what you've got to get what you want. So when you're unable to get uh, through meritocracy, you, you now indulge in, I worship the same way with you, or I, I come from the same neighborhood, we speak the languages that are common. So we haven't found that leadership that can express the, the opportunities and the potential of our people. We're still groping, unfortunately, in the dark. Well, some would say that that's a withering critique, considering the fact that you are part of the ruling political class and the very leadership that you criticize. Absolutely. Uh, I, don't, I don't make an exception for my own class. There's a problem. I'd like to address the problem. I would in that pursuit of um i've led a part of this country for eight years so by all means yes i'm part of the elite class that is a problem to nigeria and um, the solution has to come from our class if the solution comes or if there's an attempt to take leadership as it is going on now from a class outside the elite class the enlightened class and that's what elite is all about elitism is all about then we are in big trouble. You, you could, you know, you, you find that, you take a country like Afghanistan, right? You have the elites in Afghanistan, but unfortunately, the country is being run by those who should be run themselves. We don't want to find ourselves a thing. That's the same problem that happened with Somalia. And we're drifting. Yesterday, one of our icons in this country, the husband of one of our icons in this country, uh, Dora Kunya, husband, uh, Chike, was mauled down and killed on the streets like, you wouldn't even do that to an animal. Yet it's a norm. We're going to talk about it and sensationalize it for a couple of days, and it's gone. But it just tells us that even our basic humanity, we're losing it. And that is what our country is drifting to. And, I mean, 
who, who do you hold responsible for things like that? The entire leadership class. And that's why I said nothing has changed from what I said 10 years ago. It's all of us. Um, the folks who are in leadership ought not to be, most of them. If you go to the National Assembly and spend 10 minutes on the gallery, you ask yourselves, how did you? How did we get here? Who are these folks? What do they know? So politics has become an occupation rather than a vocation. A vocation is something that you give of yourself out of love, out of selflessness. An occupation is something you do because you need to survive, right? We have reduced our, our politics to occupational. So any Tom, Dick, and Harry, regardless of what he has to offer or not offer, commission or omission, seeks political office. That's the only way he thinks he can actualize himself. And uh, unfortunately, we, the politicians, have promoted this. The fault, again, lies with the elites because they stayed back and thought it was politics was beneath them. Guess what? If you don't correct this system, our children will suffer for it. Most of us are elites. Our children are ill-equipped to deal with Nigeria as it is today. So the sooner we get in headlong and orders arduous task, the, be the, the, better, the better for all of us. Right. Well, that, that's uh, again, that's uh, that's a pretty um, scathing assessment. But I, I think a lot of people would agree with you that it is a factual assessment. So uh, after 61 years of independence, the cumulative effects of years of ethnic competition, bad leadership, ferocious plunder have left Nigeria pretty much with a bloodied nose. And, and what you're saying is that most alarmingly, that sense of failure at the top has percolated further down across that strata of leadership throughout things like the National Assembly, the legislative process, the military, and the judiciary as well. Yes, Charles, uh, unfortunately, that's true. Um, there is no sense of nation building. It's all, it's all self glorification. Um, leaders talk about their legacies. They don't talk about what is our national legacy? What is the legacy of the state? Governments come in and jettison everything that has been done prior to their coming in and, and, and describe all those who led before them as, as uh, ill-equipped to do so. You see, you, you see the lifestyle of governors, and um, our leaders, and it's just it just doesn't add up, you know. Uh, corruption is at its it couldn't be worse than it is today. Uh, the sense of insecurity, you know, nobody travels along our highways anymore. If you're not connected to an airport, that's it. No one is going to go there. Um, could it be could it be scarier than uh, Somalia? Really, let's be honest with ourselves. In Somalia, there's a government, <laughs> there's some semblance of administration, but nobody, nobody drives along the, the streets connecting or, or the highways to the other because you're not sure you're going to get there. That's 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 no different from what is happening in our country today. You know, I couldn't as short as Abuja to Kaduna. It's a death. It's now who are meant to correct me in the train, which was, of course, before before now was beneath them. So there is there, we we are acquiescing. We are we are giving up, as it were. It will take a while to 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 um, regain our country if we go on this way. I don't see us going on this way for another three four years. It's not possible. I mean, Chiki Akunyuli was gone down on the streets at Mpok Junction in, in Anambra, and um, people were taking videos. We've lost our humanity. Humility. The guy was, humanity, I beg your pardon. The guy was struggling to survive. I mean, I doubt if he could have made it with what I saw on video, but come on, even that, that compassion to go to him, people were taking videos. We have been so um, bestialized, as it were, that a lot we need if we don't get the right leadership in 23 and it, even 23 looks too far for me then we can begin to write off this country well that that brings me to the next thing i was going to talk about which is that uh, upcoming 2023 election all the divisions that we're seeing in this country 
along ethnic and religious lines at the highest levels, uh, northern governors appearing to reject power shift to the south, southern governors throwing the gauntlet down with regard to that, controversy swirling around open grazing. I mean, how alarming is all of that? Is that usual or have ethnic relations worsened in Nigeria? And if so, how dangerous is that um, as the 2023 elections approach? It's all selfishness. I mean, the southern governors want it, the northern governors want it. Who wants competent leadership? Let's start from there, right? I don't care. Look, gold is gold, whether it's in the hands of a king or a beggar. It's a, it's, it's gold, you know? I, I don't care who who runs a country as long as it's run properly. That's one. Two, those who want open grazing, I ask them one simple question. Would you like to be a herdsman? Wouldn't you rather be proud having a son who has a large garage somewhere than having a son walk from one part of the country almost barefooted trying to graze cattle? You know, it's a selfishness of their lives. That's what I'm talking about. Even when you say, okay, let the leadership come from the north, they want it to come from their part of the north, their own sector. It must be someone from their own ranks. That's what they're looking at. They're not looking at someone who is competent. So it's all about me, me, myself. Um, and that's what has brought us to where we are today. That's a very, very sobering reflection. And uh, please stay with us in spite of the uh, rather poor quality of the internet line. What you're saying is very, very important indeed and would like to talk with you some more. You're watching The Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead. Stay with us. Now today we continue our exploration of the evolution of Nigeria as the country marks its 61st independence anniversary this week. Once a disparate collection of ethnic groups, Nigeria was amalgamated into one territory 107 years ago and turned into a distinct state in 1960. From an early British inherited parliamentary system of government to absolute imperious military dictatorship to the point when democracy returned under what is supposed to be a free electoral system, today power is supposed to be vested in the people. But Nigeria is still experimenting with political and social equality and the dem democratic spirit remains elusive. And with me, the former governor of Cross River State and former presidential candidate, Donald Duke. He joins me on the line from Calabar on a fairly shaky internet line. Uh, we apologize for that, but uh, he has a lot of very important things to say. And thank you very much indeed, Governor Duke, for staying with us. Um, so as the next elections approach, picking up from when we uh, where, where you stopped uh, and we went on break, uh, the political class is not talking about issues of poverty or economy or security as much as they ought to. I mean, the dominant discussion is about zoning and which ethnic nation is going to produce the next president. What's your stand on that? I mean, does zoning and regional politics drag this country back? Should the politicians be saying let the best emerge or should the issue of zoning remain critical in the interest of balance and fairness? Charles, it would be naive to, to discard zoning in a nation which is a contraption of various ethnic groups and, and uh, uh, religious beliefs, as you have mentioned. Um, but what should be pivotal in all this is competence. Um, unfortunately, that is never mentioned in any political discourse. It's who is popular enough, as it were, to gather or garner enough votes. Um, I think they're not mutually exclusive, zoning and competence. You can find incompetent people everywhere if you seek hard enough for it. But it's just become a populist thing. So there are folks who believe that they have they are the ones who have the name that commands um, recognition throughout the country. And that is sad. Um, let's go back to the conversation we had on um, cattle grazing, for instance, open grazing. Um, I have a friend who has four kids who went through Oxford University. Uh, 
he's very successful. He's been in government. He's, he comes from one of the most notable families from uh, from the northern part of the country. And he was supporting herdsmanship. And I and I said to him, I said, would you would you like any of your your kids to be a herdsman? Um, and he said, no. Then why do you think that other kids should inherit that? Trekking with cattle across the country. So you see, whenever you criticize what is not what you think ought to be to to be addressed, as long as it's from another part of the country, um, um, ethnic coloration comes into it. So, if it's um, south, given it out, you know. Sorry, we, we lost you for a minute there, but but given everything you've said um, about uh, sort of the the you know the problems that are going on around leadership and and all the issues around zoning and so on, do you expect the presidential election in twenty twenty three to be vicious and vengeful? Well, the signs are all there. We're hoping that things would would change. A lot will require will depend on the current leadership uh, under President Mohammed Buhari. He he has to intervene and make sure things go right. He uh, you see you have you have the INEC, for instance, saying that they can they can conveniently carry out electronic voting, but the power that the the, the government in power says no, you cannot. If the independent electoral commission says they can do this, where does the government get the competence to say that they cannot? Um, that already raises questions. If a, a, a proper a, a, a government should rather say, look, how do we ensure that what you say you can do is, abs is, is done because it's the ideal thing to do at this stage. So how do we ensure that you succeed? and not know, let's go back to what we've been doing in the past that has never come up with unquestioned results. So it's again, born of selfishness. Let's use, let's use this. And you see, when you carry out an election, it's like a judgment in law, justice is not only meant to be done, but seen to be done. In, 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 in political parlance, an election should be transparently open. Nobody should be should question it. A questioning an election or electoral result should not be the norm. It should be an aberration. It's Governor Duke, I, I'm very, very sorry to interrupt you, but um, we're, we're literally out of time and the, and the line is getting even more shakier. Donald Duke there talking to me from Calabar.